Hey everyone, Vince Lewis here with our final edition of the Partners Podcast for 2021, where we look to educate, enlighten, and inform you on everything related to the world of medical stop loss, self-funding, and all that falls in between. It's really hard to believe that we're coming to the end of 2021, which for at least for me has flown by. But what's even more amazing is that we are now coming up on almost a year since we've launched our podcast. We've had a variety of guests, both internal and external, and I hope you're able to learn more about our industry and about Partners MGU as well. As I reflected on the past year, I wanted to share some of the more popular segments we did. Most are related to the stop loss business itself, but also speak to themes of professional development and leadership. Speaking of the stop loss business, by far, one of the more popular segments was with Adam Russo of the FIA Group, as it relates to stop loss policies delivered in a manner only he can bring. Biggest challenge is getting people to read them. Read the right. policy. Like I said. I mean, that's it. I mean, put it this way, Vince. One day when I grow up, right, when I become a big guy, right, when I, when I finally make it to the, to, the big, to the big top, the major leagues, I'm going to start my own stop loss company. And it's going to be called FIA Stop Loss, okay? All right. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to have the cheapest premiums on earth. So if everyone else is 100,000, 150, 200, 300, mine will be 20 grand, okay? It's going to be so cheap, everyone's going to buy it. But here's the thing. Instead of a 10-page policy, it's going to be a one-page policy, or maybe two. Okay. And what I'm going to do on page two, not on page one, they might read page one by accident, but on page two, I'm going to have one exclusion, and I'm going to highlight it I'm going to, in yellow. I'm going, to put, I'm going to put like glitter on it. I'm going to make it a 30 font. I'm going to bold it, and it's right. going to say, we will never reimburse a claim. Okay. And I will sell so many policies because people don't read them. They just look at the price. And the bottom line fact, folks, is this. You know, I have seen, my company, FIA, has seen every type of stop-loss policy there is. If you're not realizing that there are, there's exclusion provisions in there, there is language in there that literally would make it that you, as the plan, have to pay the claim based on the terms of your plan doc. But the stop loss carrier does not have to reimburse you. They don't have right. to reimburse at all. They specifically say in that situation, they won't reimburse. Now, that might be fine for you, but at least you would know what that risk is. Most right. people assume that when they buy a stop loss policy, if they pay it and it's over spec, it gets reimbursed. These three words, pure and simple, read the policy. I think there's a Stevie Wonder song that goes by that, but, but anyway, I digress. I digress. Speaking about stop loss, if you had a chance to check out any of our social media content, one of the big things we talk about is the whole idea of stop loss being a commodity. Obviously, we don't feel that way, but a lot of people in our industry do. Our executive underwriter, Carol Side, takes on this subject in a recent episode in a very direct and succinct manner, which explains why this is not the case. Check it out. What are the things that you try to express to you know producers when you talk to them um, in terms of why it isn't a commodity product? Well, because there are so many different contract provisions and that as a, a broker, you need to make sure that you are providing your client or your policyholder with um, the coverage that you think they are. So you need to really be able to look at each and every detail. Um, and if you're putting it on a spreadsheet and looking just at rate, you know, you're missing the bigger picture. And you know, depending on what the contract type is or what their definition of experimental is and whether or not there are things that are excluded in the stop loss policy that are covered under the plan document, you know, there are all sorts of places where something could fall through the cracks if you're not paying attention. And you know, putting a number on a spreadsheet, you know, it might look good in the beginning, but then when it comes down to brass tacks and you're paying claims, if somebody can find reasons to not pay a claim, and you save them a dollar and you're costing them $100,000, right. they're not gonna be happy. Right, right. As I mentioned previously, if you've not had the chance, please check out our series with my colleague, Bill Hoyt, and other members of the Partners MGU team on this subject. As most of our industry are aware, we are aging. I heard a stat recently that the average age of professionals in, our, in the self-funded space was in their mid fifties, myself included. And I know there's been some movement to change that, and we at Partners are no different through the development of our organic training program for young underwriters. Our VP of Underwriting, Gary Hudgens, dispenses some advice for younger underwriters based on his 30 years in the business. 
what's your philosophy on relationship management and how, and how have you been able to impart that knowledge onto our younger underwriting staff? You're not just doing quotes for this person. You're creating a relationship. You want this guy to want to work with you, you know, to, to want to build a block with you. And the only way you do that, I mean, you get, you have to be available. Um, you got to be personable. Um, they have to like you. You have to show that you like them too. And, and there's, that there's give and take. Right. I understand, you know, sometimes there, there are favors um, that are requested out there. But before I can do favors, I got to make sure that I have enough business on the books, profitable business on the books that can support that. Finally, our CEO, Brian Miller, who was our first guest on the podcast, discusses his philosophy on leadership that I felt was unique and refreshing. But I'm kind of curious as to what, how you view your leadership style and how you use it to, uh, to develop people. Sure. High expectations, deep devotion. Ocean. You know, just that, that simple phrase would be what I think is needed when you're, when you're building and maintaining a team. Uh, there is nothing I wouldn't do for our people, obviously. And I want them to feel, I, I'm so glad that you see me that way, um, because that is definitely a goal. But I would also challenge you, and, and I think you would agree that while, while I am here to support you, I would also hope that you recognize that no one has ever had higher expectations of you than I do. Um, and it's, it's an exchange for that devotion. Uh, sure. That devotion is, is not just benevolence. Oh, it's it's right. achieving a goal. You know, I, right. and, I, and I don't hide that. So there you have it, folks. You're one of the Partners Podcasts done and dusted, as they say. Look for us in 2022 with more insight and opinion from industry-leading experts in the world of self-funding. For those of you who wish to see more extended versions of our content, please be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel or follow our LinkedIn page for our shorter video clips. Everyone have a safe, enjoyable, and blessed holiday, and we will see you again in 2022. Take care.